the Elegoo Saturn III Ultra. Let's give it a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, we have another 12K mid-range 3D resin printer to look at. Less than a week after I reviewed the world's first, the Anycubic M5S. Many of you have been excitedly awaiting Eligu's entry and asking if they've improved upon what Anycubic has started. It's certainly a gorgeous looking printer that seems to have been designed by Batman. On this Saturn, the power switch has been moved from the convenient front only to be jumbled together with everything else on the right hand side. It's a bit close and untidy, but at least you know where everything is. The lid still has the very convenient hole to allow print farms and the serious enthusiasts to add proper air ducting and palm off offensive odours upon their neighbours. Those wishing to purify their pongs will be delighted to know that there's two USB ports inside the enclosure for exclusive use with the Eligu carbon air filters. Don't try charging your phone here. Despite being two ports though, there's only one air filter included. However, it seems Eligu will soon be launching a pretty substantial looking air purifier, the Mars Mate, which is an interesting name choice. We have a product called Mates here in the UK, but I'm pretty sure there's no correlation between them. The back of the printer has two fans, one in, one out. This is apparently more efficient and prolongs the service life of the printer. Personally, I can't help but think it represents a massive lost opportunity for Eligu. Why not use this built up heat to warm the resin tray, like we've seen with the Uniformation GK2? And why not make one of these an easy point for a cartridge filter, again like the GK2? It's a shame because a move like that would have made this printer stand out. And I'm going to be bluntly honest, this printer does not stand out. As we've already seen, there's an antenna, so we know that the S3 Ultra has Wi-Fi. The dual linear rails look truly sturdy with a strong wide stance. The rail makes use of a ball screw design, which many feel adds speed, smoothness, and reduces layer line issues. The resin tray remains metal with clear level indicator markings and the same semi-opaque ACF release liner like we saw on the MS5, which we can think of as a posh FEP. The etched pattern on the build plate is a work of art and it also provides plenty of grip. The menu screen is reasonably sized and integrates seamlessly into a shiny glossy front, making Batman very proud of his handiwork. The user interface is new, very slick looking and extremely easy to use. It would be beautiful if Eligu hadn't spoilt it in two ways. Firstly, just like any cubic with the M5S, they've added this pointless button to persuade us that the printer is doing clever checks on our behalf. I dismissed its uselessness with any cubic and I do it again here. Of course these things work, we'd soon know if they didn't. This is just superfluous bells and whistles, completely unnecessary and impractical window dressing. The other thing I don't like is how Eligu have made a feature of their UI being multilingual. Well, that's very nice, I'm sure. But in 99.9% .9 of cases, the only people actually benefiting from this are Eligu themselves. There's no value for me as a user. I don't care how many languages there are. So come on, Eligu, don't sell us snake oil. Stick to the pertinent facts. The 12K screen is what it's really all about, and just like any cubic, it's a 19 by 24 micron XY resolution light source. So again, we're going to have rectangular rather than square pixels. This makes me think it's exactly the same screen as we find on the M5S, 
no doubt bought from the same supplier. And so what? Who cares about rectangular pixels? I saw good prints on the M5S and you'll also see them here in a moment. But it was whilst comparing these 12K prints that I noticed something strange. This Ameta Labs Town test print was made on the M5S. This one was made on the Saturn III Ultra. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? What's with these lines? Yes, these are highly magnified images and you won't see these with the naked eye. But what are these scratches? I've looked through a few similar prints on other admittedly 8K mid-range printers and I don't see anything like them there. So is it me? Do these scratchy patterns look very similar? Is it a coincidence or is it the 12K screen? Is it the rectangular pixels? I don't know and the chances are you'll never see it with the naked eye. But it has to be said, it's strange. So moving on to printing now, I hadn't got any Eligu resin and I've had good results with this Anycubic water-based resin previously. So these are the settings that I came up with. I should also mention that this printer uses Goo format files, which are open source, meaning that you can use your favorite slicer of choice. The town print you've already seen. The open source ring looks pretty good. In my M5S review, I printed this Mephisto head by Wicked3D and compared it with the Frozen Mini 8K print of the same, hoping to show an improvement on the Frozen's 22 micron print against the 19 by 24 microns both the Anycubic and Eligu are giving us. So it's only fair to do the same here. Different resins and different printers, but the same model and no anti-aliasing. Back with just the Eligu, I took anti-aliasing halfway on Mini Vogman. For a look at what full anti-aliasing can do for us, I turned to Arch Villain Games and also had another go at the Mephisto head. Something I haven't mentioned about the Saturn III Ultra is Eligu's claim of fast printing. I'll be perfectly honest, I haven't tested these claims but I have no reason to doubt them. After all, Eligu seems to have the same screen and the same FEP that we've seen on the M5S. And most significantly, they've developed a high-speed resin of their own. Very fluid resin and an increased layer height to 0.1 will no doubt give you faster, albeit less detailed, prints, regardless of the printer that you use. So what are my thoughts on the Eligu Saturn III Ultra? Well, it's okay. It prints well and with fast resin and low quality layer heights, it will no doubt print quickly. The linear rails and ball screw setup is beautifully robust. The user interface is attractive and very easy to use. And that's it. Folks are going to ask me to compare the Saturn III Ultra with the Anycubic Photon M5S. Some YouTubers will no doubt spin this into a separate video. But let me tell you very quickly, there's no need to compare. They both print as well as each other, and they should, as they seem to be using the same equipment. But the 19 by 24 rectangular pixel screen is not better than the square pixel 22 micron that we see on Frozen's Mini 8K or 8KS, at least in my opinion. It's close, but for me, the 8K has the edge. And that's where the comparisons end. Love it or hate it, the M5S is packed with innovation, like a self-leveling build plate and a force detection Xeon. And trust me, that's the way of the future. That's the way the industry will go. The Saturn III has a manually adjustable build plate needing the traditional paper leveling method. And maybe there's a tiny benefit to this as I did struggle printing very small prints on the M5S if I didn't use a large raft. 
and the S3 Ultra gave me no such issues. There isn't any innovation on the Saturn III Ultra other than the 12K screen. In fact, I can't see how the S3 Ultra benefits over the new S3 12K. At least that still has the convenient switch placement and it has the same printing power. Maybe other than the Batman design, there are other changes, but there's nothing jumping out at me. And what's most shocking, and what's going to get me in real trouble with Eliku, is the pricing of this model. Sure, the S3 Ultra has a slight print volume advantage, but the M5S, with all its marking leading innovation, sold at a pre-order price of just $399, which was a bargain. The S3 Ultra has a pre-order price, at least at the time of making this video, of $499. That's $100 more for what? There's nothing new here. Eligu missed the bragging rights of being the first 12K by a week. I expected a much lower price because even now, the Mono 5S is $499. And if you're a newbie to resin printing, or if you're a lover of innovation, it's honestly a more attractive buy. And if innovation isn't your thing, or if you prefer manual adjustment, then the standard M5 still gives you 12K printing power and a much lower price. Frankly, it seems to me that Eligu really need to rethink their prices, because right now they're losing out to the competition. But Eligu does have one chance. They're releasing a 9K Mars with genuine square pixels and a proper 18 micron XY resolution, which should, on paper at least, beat anything out there right now, including the 12Ks, the frozen Mini 8Ks, and even the budget DLPs. However, again, Eligu is doing something strange. They tell me only one unit will be sent out for review, and I won't be that lucky soul. Yes, we all know that I upset Eligu when I spilt the beans on their flawed Mars 3, and we all know that most of the other channels denied that it existed, and yet real users experienced it, causing Eligu to, purely by coincidence, change the Xeom configuration. But that's me. I have to tell the truth, and no one pays me to do otherwise, and never will. So please, if you're tempted by the Mars 9K, just remember, I'm not alone here. Eligu won't let me, or any other independent free-thinking channel, review this printer until well after all the sales are over. This really isn't the way they've done things before. Something has changed within the company, or maybe, they have something to hide. I really hope not. So please, please, Eligu, let's see a return to the better practices of the past. A quick look at my user comparison, which I admit needs much, much more data to be truly reliable, does show that up until now at least, 91% of Eligu customers would recommend them. And that's the Eligu that printing community fell in love with. Not the high-priced, innovation-inept, review-denying company that we're seeing at the moment. And getting off my high horse, finally, let me say it again. I do like the Saturn III Ultra. It's a pretty-looking 12K machine that prints well. It's not the best, it lacks innovation, and normally I'd say you get what you pay for. But here, that really doesn't seem to be the case. I truly, desperately hope that the prices will reflect the reality of this printer before my review goes live. Because for me at least, good looks are not enough. So, as I hear the sound of Eligu crossing my name off future review lists, that is, if they'll allow other channels to actually review their printers in the future, I hope you've enjoyed this video. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.